Hey YouTube, it's Earl and it's a wonderful southern cicada singing humid pipe smoking night here in North Louisiana. Where have I been? What new pipes have I added? And what am I smoking tonight? Time for a little bit of a rant. Well, YouTube, um, how are you guys doing tonight? Um, I am, uh, it is a, like I said, it's a wonderful, it's a Tuesday evening here, and uh, the cicadas, after having been kind of like, I don't know where they were this summer, they've come back in full bloom, and so I don't know if you're picking that up on, on the microphone or not yet but uh but i apologize for that uh let me do some house cleaning items and i thought i'd cover hey where have i been the past couple of weeks and uh, a couple of other things that are just going on and a few other things so uh house clean tonight i am smoking if this will focus on dunhill three year matured virginia and in a new pipe acquisition that I'm a little bit nervous to show you because I feel like I need to explain myself on it but at the end of the day I guess I've come to the conclusion I don't need to explain myself I'm smoking that in a Dunhill can you see the white spot yeah they can see the white spot it's a, it's a new one so this was made in 2019 it's a beautiful sandblasted straight billiard uh, a shape 103 I think group size 4 has horn here on uh, uh, where the the stem joins there and uh, it's a military mount so it's a it's a pretty unique uh, little Dunhill pipe and I splurged I could so I did um, which is kind of odd for me because I think I don't know, even maybe a year ago, heck, maybe even six months ago, I'd have said, that's ludicrous. Who needs to spend that kind of money on a Dunhill? And I think that's probably right. But hey, if you've got the money and you want to buy Dunhills, buy a Dunhill. Um, but I will say this for anybody who's wondering, um, and I don't think this is me just justifying my purchase on the back end this is a very light pipe um light pipes generally means that they're better able to um well that that their tannins and tars have been removed uh with either sufficient time or i know dunhill used to do an oil curing process i don't think they do that anymore um but that um, it's had sufficient drying time, the tannins, the tars, all that kind of stuff. They've been uh, removed, all those things that would cause bad flavors in a pipe, certainly in the break-in period, generally have been removed if you have a light pipe. So this is extremely light, but it's extremely well balanced. And it wasn't just me who said that. When I handed it to my wife, who's not a pipe smoker, but she's familiar with all my pipes that was the first thing she said she said wow that pipe is really light um so um that being said i'm happy with it it's a good smoker this is probably my sixth or seventh bowl uh in it and it's just uh it's a wonderful pipe and a wonderful smoker so that's my house cleaning I'm smoking some dunhill tobacco and a new dunhill pipe um, where have I been for the past couple weeks? Now, I would expect that most of you probably, because number one, I don't have a regular posting schedule. I'm not like, say, Bradley or maybe even Martin at Over a Pipe, but Bradley from Stuff and Things where he's got, he's got a first impressions on Wednesday and then he's got a Sunday smoking things and then he's, you know, I, I'm not, um, that regular because um, you know partly I, I've got work I've got family and I've got four kids in that family and that just makes it extremely difficult 
So many of you probably didn't didn't notice I was gone for two weeks, but maybe some of you noticed that I hadn't put out anything in a, in a couple of weeks and maybe wondering where I was. Don't worry, I didn't have the COVID. Um, although I just found out about 14 days ago, I was in the presence of someone who got sick a day later. So even though I've just kind of found that out of finishing my self-isolation time now, um, but, uh, I was, I was on vacation for about nine days, and so that was great, good fun, uh, to get out. My family and I, we went to Breckenridge, Colorado. We drove from here, from North Louisiana, all the way out to Breckenridge. Hopefully I'll be playing some pictures over this so you can kind of see, um, what that's like. Um, but if you haven't been to Breckenridge, it's just a wonderful um, it's a wonderful place, uh, just absolutely beautiful and pristine, um, everywhere you go, because it's kind of just situated in, in a valley, everywhere you look, you, you, there are mountains, uh, around you, large mountains, not the little hills, you know. For those of you who don't know Louisiana, we have a mountain, it's called Mount Driscoll, and it's highest point, it's like 545 feet above sea level. So hesitate to call it a mountain, but that's where I've been. And really, you know, for us, um, my wife and I, we've been married or will have been married for uh, 19 years, uh, a week from today, which is the 21st of July. And, uh, you know, early on, we certainly did lots of trips together, uh, just her and I, even if they weren't necessarily vacations, um, once we had children, we, we did a couple of family vacations, but really my attention really kind of got on the, hey, I got to get with it career-wise, and I got to get out there and provide. And so uh, really over the past you know, eight to ten years, um, I can't remember a time that I've taken a whole week off. I can remember taking like a Thursday, Friday Saturday, Sunday off, or maybe extending, you know, taking, doing Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of, that kind of thing, but never taking a full week off, um, and having two weekends on, on either side of that, and, um, it was our first kind of big family trip. We've got a four-year-old, and, um, so really kind of doing that kind of travel up to this point. I've got an 11, a 9, a six and a four year old. And really, you know, really for the past eight to 10 years, we've just had children that have been too young to do extensive travel with, especially once number three came around. You've got two young ones, it's kind of easy, but when three get there and one of them's small, it's hard to do that. So this is our first kind of big family vacation. And we just, we had a blast, we stayed the condo it was right off of downtown, and so we could walk to downtown Breckenridge, which is a, just a wonderful uh, environment, a wonderful little town. And uh, we were really only a half mile from any of the trails that were kind of around there that were doable for us and our kids. And um, it was great. One of the days we got to go up uh, on the super chair and go up the mountain, and we kind of did a hike above the trees and um, above the tree line and got to just see the beauty of everything that's around there. So it was a great time and we had tons of fun. Um, but In the last two weeks, I can say that I think it, well, not just I can say, I think it's safe to say that um, coronavirus has been the main thing that everybody's been concerned about. And I think it's the only thing that we talk about, at least here in the United States. And it's all being seen through political lenses. And everything is being seen by both sides through a political lens. And to me, that's troubling because politics isn't meant to be everything um, in life. 
you know, it should be, I think, a prominent part. We should be active citizens. But the point at which you begin to view everything through politics is the point probably where you went too far. I was going to say became an asshole, but went too far. We'll, we'll leave it there. Um, and it's really dangerous. I get it that, um, you know, you've got, if you're, no matter which side you are, you look at it and you go, okay, the other side's going to try and capitalize on this, and so I need to, too. But there's one thing that, to me, has been ridiculous um, in, in its reaction to... And that has been the mandates to wear masks. And now, I can understand if your point of view is a governor doesn't have the authority to tell me to wear a mask. Okay, I get that. But my question to you is, have you actually looked at why these governors, mayors, city councils have passed these resolutions requiring people to wear masks in public places. We know that coronavirus is very contagious, and we know that it, it kills enough of the people, given how contagious it is, that it's having a striking toll in this country um, and will continue to do so as it spreads, but there's a good chance if people put a mask on, that it prevents you, if you are pre-symptomatic, okay, so that's before you have symptoms, it would prevent you from passing that on to people who might come into close proximity to you, okay? So the old rule was keep six feet away. Well, people really haven't been doing that as of late, and you've seen the surge. So the, the deal is, try and stay six feet away, put a mask on, it will keep your droplets that the sprites, that the virus can spread through closer to you, and so they won't travel as far, lessening the risk. And if somebody else has a mask on, lessens the risk that they'll inhale or get those droplets in them. There, there have been several studies demonstrating its effectiveness. So, regardless of whether you think a governor is uh, within his legal authority or not, um, you should wear a mask if you're in public, in my opinion. Or if you're going to be visiting with someone who's outside of your household for an extended period of time, I think that you should do that as well. Now, am I going to get in a shape if you decide not to? No. Do I think you should be arrested and fined by local authorities if you decide to do so? Um, if it's something that's passed by a city council or some sort of legislative body and not just a one-person mandate, and you decide to violate the law written by your local representatives, yeah, I, I think you ought to be fined for that. If it's just an executive order from a governor, probably not. No. I would say no. That's not how this country operates. Um, but at the same time, I know here in Louisiana, the governor has issued an order that you should wear a mask um, in public. And several sheriff's offices have said, we're, we won't, we're not going to enforce that. Meaning, if we see you walking down the street and you're not wearing a mask, uh, we're not going to arrest you. Um, but what they have said is that each business has its own right to enforce the uh, mask wearing or request you to wear a mask if you're coming in. And if they request and you decide not to leave or you become irate, well, now that's trespassing and we will arrest you and have you prosecuted for that. And I think that's the right balance. 
uh, quite honestly, is that each business, each establishment has a responsibility to do that. Now, now, why do I think that's important? Uh, maybe it's some personal experience that I've had recently. Um, I was in a meeting for an hour and a half with someone who, within 24 hours of me having been in that meeting, he began to develop COVID symptoms. Now, like I said, I didn't find this out until I came back from vacation. And so, um, because the email that alerted me to all this went to my work email. So when I came back, logged into my computer, even though I've been working from home, and I saw the email, I found out after vacation. Um, but the entire time that we were together, and it was he and several other people in our meeting, and he, I was the one closest to him. Uh, the entire time during that meeting, where feasible, we were both wearing masks. Okay? It was a pain in the butt. I wear glasses most of the time. I don't for these meetings because the light just reflects off of them. Or I don't for these videos but because the light just reflects off of them. But I wear glasses, and, you know, my glasses are fogging up. It's getting hard to see, all that kind of stuff. But... Um, I'm nearly two weeks, tomorrow will make two weeks, and I'm nearly two weeks from having significant exposure to someone who I don't know for certain would have been uh, contagious at that point, because you just don't know, but from everything that we know that is generally 48 hours beforehand, you can be contagious. So he would have been right in the sweet spot for being contagious. Um, I, I've had zero symptoms. Uh, I haven't gotten, been tested because I've had zero symptoms, and that's the guidelines from the state of Louisiana, is that if you've been exposed, you should self-isolate, and if you experience symptoms, then you should go get tested. If you experience no symptoms, you don't get tested. And so I've honored that, and that's what I've done. Um, and at the completion of tomorrow, it'll be two weeks from the time that I had any contact with them, and so my self-isolation period should end, okay? But um, anyway, just from my perspective, wearing a mask, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I know it's inconvenient. You can forget that you had a mask on. I know for several other reasons it can be inconvenient, but um, really guys, it's for your benefit that you wear one. It could potentially save you from being exposed and it could potentially save others from being exposed. And especially if you would consider yourself a Christian, and I'm not saying that most of my viewers would, but predominantly in America, that's the predominant religion, and certainly where I am in the South, it's still kind of the norm that you would describe yourself as a, a Christian, and in many ways, uh, for many people, even an evangelical Christian. So if you're a Christian and you decide that you take the words of the scriptures seriously, okay, you've got a command from Jesus himself that we are to love, he says it's a new command I give you, love one another the way that I have loved you. And so he went further with the newness of this command isn't that we're to love one another. That was already a command of the old one, love your neighbor as yourself. He changed the standard. Love one another as I have loved you. He raised it. And what do we know about Jesus lived a life of sacrifice for us and died a death of sacrifice. Very literally, right? That he came died on the cross for us, but his whole life through the Christian point of view was an act of service and humiliation, that everything that he did was for us. And so if that's your standard, to me, I don't see how you don't, how you get yourself to a point where you don't wear a mask. Because it's the thing to love your fellow brothers and sisters, to love your neighbors by making a small self-sacrifice of being a little uncomfortable. 
But on top of that, it can have a benefit for you. And I know the last thing any of you wanted to hear was some nice thoughts on a mask. I'm sure if you're on Facebook or whatever, you've had enough of it. But those are my thoughts. Wanted to share it, have a little bit of a rant. Guys, this is Earl. Hope you all have another wonderful evening. And I'll be posting some reviews soon. Um, you can let me know down in the comments whether you want to see me review Elizabethan or 965 more next. With that, guys, that's Earl. I'll talk to you later.